Welcome to another six pattern video in the six pattern video series. My name is Kevin. And I am Max. Today we're going to be talking about the top 25 pearls in pulmonary pathology divided into six concise and beautifully conceived topics. Today we're all the way to topic six. The final topic. The final topic. Series. And this is all about key pearls to diagnosing interstitial lung disease. So this is the this is the one that that really jams up most pathologists. What to do with a non-neoplastic biopsy, this whole section has to do with that. So today we're going to be looking at surgical lung biopsy from a patient who is 52 years old. And this patient presents with acute disease clinically. So she's short of breath with cough. She has respiratory failure, requires intubation. She has bilateral lung infiltrates, so she's sick She's got bilateral infiltrates. They do routine procedures, blood cultures, uh, bronchial alveolar lavage. Everything's negative. They cannot get a diagnosis. They're watching this patient in extremis, and they say, we've got to do something. They take her to surgery. They do a biopsy. Better do a wedge biopsy. I actually think she's a he in this particular case. Now, before we get into the case just a little bit, I just want to call your attention to this reticulation down here. It's five millimeters. Yeah. What would you say about the quality of this surgical wedge biopsy? I'd say it's on the small side, but I only say that to you in private. Right. Because, you know, size is important in surgical lung biopsy, but well, the last thing you want to do is say anything about the size of a surgical biopsy because the person who's going to read that is a, tell me, here, answer this one. Psychiatrist? No. Internist? No. Thoracic surgeon? Of course. And thoracic surgeons really, really don't like pathologists commenting on the quality of their biopsy. So I just, if it's enough to make a diagnosis, I'm super happy with you it. let it be. And I let it be. But if you find yourself struggling on a small biopsy like this, it might be because it's a small biopsy. But it's possible. this yeah. particular case, I think we can make a diagnosis. Yeah. So There's a lot of pathology here. There's a lot of pathology. I mean, the lung's supposed to be empty white space, and this, this is, is all pink, yeah. right? So we can go to higher power and we can see what exactly we have going on here. And all of a sudden we can see that there is filling of the airspace quite dramatically. We have fibrin. Yep. We have a whole bunch of histiocytes. Just yeah. histiocytes galore. Yeah. And then we run across. And they're gathering into kind of nodules. They're, they're gathering yeah. into nodules like yeah. this. And what do we have in the center of this nodule? Necrosis. A Never a good thing in a bunch of necrosis. Patient. Dirty necrosis right. we've got an acutely ill patient uh, let's look around at a couple of other spots here more of the same huh yeah necrosis oh and here we have some multinucleated giant cells yeah little palisading histiocytes so i don't know about you but i'm already at necrotizing granuloma right even if you can't make out sarcoid like granulomas the the macrophages of acute granulomatous infection can be sort of pale pink and more epithelioid and blend into each other. They haven't, they haven't gathered the strength to make themselves into a hard granuloma. So if you're in doubt about the granulomatous nature, look for the giant cells. They typically will be present. You don't have to have a million of them, but they are one of the harbingers of granulomatous inflammation. Exactly. So more uh, uh, fibrin and acute lung injury, more little nodular areas of necrosis. Oh. The outside pathologist did everything perfect here. Got the AFB and GMS stay and say, hey, I got necrotizing granulomas. Let's get the AFB and GMS. Reviewed the AFB and GMS, no organisms seen. And so they call the, the cardiothoracic surgeon, the clinical team. And they're like, well, that's necrotizing granulomas, but I don't know why. Uh, so I'm going to send it out for another opinion. Right. So this case arrived to us. And when I see necrotizing granulomas like this, the pearl of pulmonary pathology pops up into the back of my mind because necrotizing granulomas like this are almost always an infectious etiology. Like 999 times out of 1,000. This now, now my question, we just did a, a video, which you can put a link on, uh, about pulmonary hemorrhage, things like 
granulomatosis, granulomatosis with, with polyangitis. polyangitis. And people talk about that being a granulomatosis, and that can have necrosis, but what's the difference here? Just a quick difference. So these are nice and round. Yeah. They're, so they're round. They're not geographic. They're relatively small, and they are pink. They're the wrong color. They're the wrong color. So wrong color, wrong shape, shape. and wrong size. Right. Which means this is not granulomatosis with polyangitis. Kevin and I can look at this and say definitively, this is, this is not I can say this definitively, this is infection. This is infection. So the only other things that have necrosis are tumors and lung infarcts. So it's not a broad differential diagnosis, but you get this kind of a picture. This is infection until it's proven otherwise. otherwise. Not because if your stains are negative, you don't go, well, I guess it's not infection. Uh -uh. Right. You sign it out as consistent with infection, stains negative. Even with negative stains. Yep. Now, this case has a little bit of a twist because on the AFB stain, yeah. when you go to high power and you just focus right here within these necrotizing Especially areas, right on the edge where the, where right the granulomous the inflammation. Yeah. Exactly. We found, I don't know, probably half a dozen AFB positive organisms. That's it. So, atypical mycobacterial infection an acute form giving you these necrotizing granulomas. If you get it, if you have a fluorescent microscope in your laboratory, you can get an oramine rhodamine stain. Those little buggers fluoresce nice orange yep. on oramine rhodamine yep. stain. Yep. And it's a much more enjoyable way to screen a slide. And for, you get to be in the dark. And you get to be in the with dark. With your microscope, for gosh sake. <laughs> so who doesn't I mean, like that? Who doesn't like that? So now you said a typical mycobacteria. Why did you say that? Well, just because they're not the large caseating granulomas typical of... But, you know, I suppose TB could do this too. You know, I think one of the hard parts about diagnosing mycobacterial disease is that you see the bugs. you got to find three, by the way. Three. If you find one, it could be an artifact. you got to be careful. Find three before you put the scope away. You find three, you diagnose it as consistent with mycobacterial infection. But remember, they're probably not going to treat unless they can grow it. True. So it's not like you're committing the patient to a year of three agent um, anti tuberculosis therapy. Exactly. They're going to culture it before they treat, most likely. But this is a strong way to say it. And sometimes the atypicals, which are the most common presentation today in the US, is a atypical mycobacterial infection like Mycobacterium avium, Mycobacterium zinope. So I think once you say it's consistent with infection, you found those bugs, go for it. You're done. Yeah, you're absolutely done. And just a little hint, when you're screening your AFB stain, don't spend a whole bunch of time out here. You're going to find the organisms right in the areas of necrosis. So there's only just a few spots on this slide where you really need to spend your time at high power looking for those. It's like what we said about capillaritis. Look where the areas of densest fibrin to look for capillaritis. Yep. Look in the granuloma if you're looking for infectious exactly. organisms exactly. in this scenario. So the pearl in this case, necrotizing granulomas like this are almost always an infectious etiology. Don't worry about granulomatosis with polyangitis. Don't worry about necrotizing sarcoid. And if that exists. Yeah. And stick to your guns, right? Mm -hmm. Even if your stains are totally negative and you spent a good amount of time looking for them, stick to your guns and say, this is an infectious process. Great. All right. I covered it. We're done. Don't forget to like and comment below and thank you.